question is from Jaydeep. Uh, could you please explain the role that the financial services industry? I think by and large you've answered that, or would you like to elaborate a little more on that? Okay, uh, and we've covered it briefly in terms of being a financial gateway, but the advantage is having this real-time visibility of the transactions that are moving from shelf to shelf. As an example, at Excel, uh, we had we were chartering 747s, DC-10s, flying aircraft uh, around the world, and we would enter into a contract with uh, with say Ford Motor Company, and maybe the charter rate is of 280,000 U.S. dollars to fly that uh, aircraft from say uh, Cleveland to Castle Bromwich in England. But there's fine print in the contract, and the contract then allows for the plane to maybe be diverted. Uh, maybe it has to stop somewhere and has to go through a, uh, um, for de-icing, and there are extra charges and extra landing fees that occur. So the billing would go across. So eventually at Excel, we were running into millions of dollars of receivables that were sitting on our balance sheet that would not get collected. Why? Because the purchase order was for $280,000. And our invoice was for, say, 300. Ford would not pay the invoice. Meanwhile, we're borrowing on that receivable from the bank, and it's only good for maybe 60 or 90 days. Meanwhile, the receivable does not get collected for 180, 270 days because that we would have to go through special uh, uh, sign-offs and, and, and write-ups with the customer to try to get it collected. The reason being is that there are changes that occur all the time when product moves from one end to the other. The customer may ask you to reroute, remove the, sh move the shipment somewhere else, incur an additional cost, and then therefore those costs which are not reflected in the original purchase order means that the invoice and the purchase order don't track, and so now as a banking institution, you have a customer that has receivables that you don't know if they're collectible. By having real-time uh, visibility and communication from the field, for change orders and the movement, you are now able to track your inventory, track the proof of delivery, and to correlate invoicing with the final contractual agreements. So what this does is it provides the ability for the financial institutions to reduce their risk, both from a transaction standpoint and from a credit standpoint, in order to ensure that when they want to provide financing to a particular corporation or for a transaction, that uh, they can be assured that everything is properly documented. Uh, I'd like to add also an additional thing on the opportunity for the financial institution. institution. You see, in the past, imagine when we used to write our name on the tickets, taking the, the tickets to the, uh, to the bank and say, please, will you finance this for me? They will laugh at us, taking the airline tickets, no? But today, Today, thanks to those systems that's available, the starting, which is a force system, uh, Sabres, I mean, they use Galileo, the airline systems. And thanks to the, now the, inter the portal, uh, like the Travelocity portal access systems and the orbits that allow to buy a ticket online. So what happened? So now you can, the, the banks is financing through their credit card automatically your tickets. Not only that, thanks to this ticket finance, is a, now the same system goes and says, you would like to uh, rent the car in the final destination? What about hotel? What about Walt Disney tickets? So imagine from the, uh, 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 the airline tickets, uh, finance, now it's financing in the, in the port of destination, the hotel, the car, and the tickets, opera tickets or Walt Disney tickets, starting from that point. Now, and once they start doing that, the banks with the credit cards, the industry, the, 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 you know, the, the travel industry, it, it increased dramatic, dramatically. Why? Because uh, they're financing their, their vacations now with the credit card and online, which before was not possible. And that is a major market also to the banks. Who is in need more for a finance? A traveler for vacation or a business people? Business people in the supply chain, they are in much more need for them. So in essence, imagine, uh, what the global logistics system will provide is the same thing. So first you start, by, you start with financing of the uh, uh, freight. What about inventory in the freight? What about bill consolidations? What about currency exchange and so forth and so on? And not only that, 
things we have, since we have a supply chain pipeline and all data is there, as uh, Mr. Bird was saying, so the data is validated, not only from the source who's provided the information that required finance, but from the both sides of the iron and supply chain, which will minimize the risk of the banks when it's financed. Not only that, and I add another additional thing for the bank. Uh, today, the banking industries, after all this crisis, usually in the past, they looked at the pie and said, where are we going to invest? The best way to invest because it is in a low risk, because they are risk adverse, is in the real estate business. But with all this problem that we have, we have uh, witnessed, so today they are looking for a new market opportunity, which also low risk. Here we go, we, this is what we're presenting. We're presenting today this financial institution, trade finance, by simplifying uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the submission for the trade and giving visibility to the whole supply chain, giving history of who's asking for finance, he been in the business, we know where he's sending his goods, we have good collateral, uh, access to this collateral material, inventory and so forth and so on, which would allow the banks to do what they do best, keeping their money, their inventory moving in a very, I mean, a, a secure and risk adverse environment. There is a lot to talk about that side of the equation, but this is in brief what the financial institution can expect from this, this initiative. Captain, you are going to have a very busy lunch. Uh, I'm sure all the banks here are going to be, you know, uh, coming to you and uh, taking this forward. Uh, we'll have, we'll take this last question before lunch. Uh, this is to Mahidar. Given the SME sector being targeted as the new driver of growth of the Indian economy, how will the GCL initiative facilitate the growth and maintain the competitiveness of this sector? Thank you, sir. It's uh, been mentioned in the morning uh, presentations also. We also believe that this initiative of GCEL, especially the global logistics systems, will directly benefit the SME in twofold. One is it will bring the efficiencies because of connectivity and brings the online information, information online on a continuous basis 24 by 7 that brings automatically the better competitiveness for SMEs. Second portion is, since they are connecting to the net, global network, that will bring more business to them. The business, earlier the global business was meant only for the big larger players that is available now through these type of networks, even for smaller players. So we see these two types of business benefits for the SMEs. Right. Uh, with this, uh, I would like to conclude this session. I'd like to thank uh, our eminent panel over here uh, and our partners for today's uh, event, GCL, Dr. Mark Bala, Mr. Bird, and Captain. Thank you so much for uh, being here with us today. And uh, I think it was uh, a short but a very insightful presentation.